Good morning, my dear professors and colleagues. It's my pleasure and a great honor to share with you this very hot lecture about uh, what every healthcare provider should know about the novel coronavirus or COVID-19. Our agenda will include what is coronavirus, what is COVID-19, what are the symptoms of COVID-19? How does COVID-19 spread? Can COVID-19 be caught from a person who has no symptoms? How can I protect myself and prevent the spread of the disease? Should I wear mask to protect myself? Is there a vaccine, drug or treatment for COVID-19? Should I worry about COVID-19? Who is at the risk of developing a severe illness? And finally, what are the cardiac implications of the novel coronavirus? The first question is, what is coronavirus? Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses which may cause illness in animals or humans. In humans, several coronaviruses are known to cause respiratory infection, ranging from common cold to the more severe disease such as MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. The most recently discovered coronavirus causes coronavirus disease or COVID-19. What is COVID-19? COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by the most recently discovered coronavirus. This new virus and the disease were known were unknown before the outbreak which began in China in December 19, uh, 2019. However, only 3% of cases occur in patients below 20 years. 81 of patients have no or mild symptoms and they can recover spontaneously. About 14% of patients have severe pneumonia and COVID can cause critical illness in only 5% of patients. What about mortality from COVID-19 in patients uh, in the general population without comorbid condition. The overall mortality is about 3.4 or 3.5 percent. However, the mortality is only 0.2 percent below the age of 40 and the morbidity and mortality increases significantly with age. Mortality is about 8 percent among patients who are aged from 70 to 79 while it is about 15% in patients who are over 80. The mortality from COVID-19 in patients with different comorbidities include Mortality in patients with cancer is about 5.6%. In hypertensive patients, the mortality is 6%. In patients with chronic respiratory illness, the mortality is 6.3%. In diabetics, the mortality is 7.3%. In patients with cardiovascular disease, the mortality is about 10.5%. Let's compare COVID-19 with the seasonal flu or MERS or SARS. If we compare the mortality from coronavirus to the seasonal flu, we will find that the there is about 61,000 mortality from the seasonal flu in 2017 to, to uh, 2018 in the American, uh, in the United States, while the mortality from coronaviruses are much, much low uh, if we compare it with the mortality from the seasonal flu. What about uh, MERS and SARS? 
If we compare the, 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 the mortality from uh, MERS and SARS with the COVID-19, we will find that the mortality is much, much higher in patients with MERS or SARS if we compared it with mortality from COVID-19. However, the number of infected patients are much higher uh, in coronavirus. So the novel coronavirus has a higher infectivity and lower fatality or mortality if we compare it with MERS or SARS. So the main problem with COVID-19 is its high infectivity rate, not high mortality rate. What are the symptoms of COVID-19? The most common symptoms of COVID-19 are fever, tiredness, dry cough, some patients may have aches and pain, nasal congestion, runny nose, sore throat, or diarrhea. These symptoms are usually mild and begin gradually. Some people become infected but don't develop any symptoms and don't feel unwell. Most patients, about 80%, recover from the disease without needing a special treatment. This is very important statement. About 80% will recover without any additional measures, just bed rest and analgesics and antibiotics. Around one of every six people who get COVID-19 becomes seriously ill and develop difficulty in respiration. Elderly and those with chronic medical conditions such as hypertension, cardiac disease, diabetes are more likely to develop serious illness. People with fever, cough, and difficult in difficulty breathing should seek medical attention immediately. How does COVID-19 spread? The disease can spread from person to person through a small droplet. It is a droplet infection from the nose or from the mouth during a cough or during a sneezing. This droplet land on subject and the surfaces around the person. Other people then catch COVID-19 by touching these objects or surfaces, then touching their eye, nose, or mouth. Can a COVID-19 be caught from a person who has no symptom? Actually, the risk of catching the COVID-19 from someone with no symptom at all is very low. However, many people with COVID-19 experience only mild symptoms. This is particularly true at the early stages of the disease. It is therefore possible to catch the COVID-19 from someone who has, for example, just mild cough and doesn't feel ill. How can I protect myself and prevent the spread of the disease? Regularly and thoroughly clean your hand with alcohol-based hand rub or wash them with soap and water. This is the most important preventive measure against the coronavirus, hand washing. Maintain at least one meter or three feet distance between yourself and anyone who is coughing or sneezing. Avoid touching eyes, nose, and the mouth. Make sure you and the people around you follow a good hygiene. This means covering your mouth and the nose with your bent elbow or tissue when you cough or sneeze. Then dispose of the used tissue immediately. Stay home if you feel unwell. If you have a fever, cough, or difficulty breathing, seek medical attention. And if possible, avoid traveling, especially if you are an older person or have diabetes or heart or lung disease. Should I wear a mask to protect myself? Only wear a mask if you are ill with COVID-19 symptoms, especially coughing, or looking after someone who may have the COVID-19. The disposable face mask can be used only once. If you are not, or not ill or looking after someone who is ill, 
then you are wasting a mask. There is a worldwide shortage of mask, so the WHO urges people to use mask wisely. Is there a vaccine, drug, or treatment for COVID-19? The answer is not yet. To date, there is no vaccine and no specific antiviral medicine to prevent or to treat the COVID-19. However, those affected should receive care to relieve symptoms, only symptomatic treatment, and patients with serious illness should be hospitalized. Most patients recover thanks to the supportive care, possible vaccine and some specific drug treatment are still under investigation. Should I worry about COVID-19? Actually, the illness due to COVID-19 infection is generally mild, especially for the children and the young adult. However, it can cause serious illness and about one in every five people who catches it, who catches it need hospital care. Who is at the risk of developing a severe illness? Elderly population and the persons with pre-existing medical conditions such as hypertension, heart disease, lung disease, cancer or diabetes appear to develop serious illness more often than the others. What about the cardiac implications of the novel coronavirus according to the most recently published paper by the American College of Cardiology? The ACC lists the following points regarding the early cardiac implication from case report on coronavirus. Up to 50% of hospitalized patients have a chronic medical illness. About 40% of hospitalized patients with confirmed COVID-19 have cardiovascular or cerebrovascular disease. Patients with underlying cardiovascular disease are at a higher risk of contracting the COVID-19 and have a worse prognosis. What are the cardiac implications? About 16.7% of patients develop arrhythmia. About 7.2% develop acute cardiac injury. About 8.7% of patients have shock, and there are reported cases of acute heart failure, myocarditis, cardiac arrest, myocardial infarction, especially type 2 MI, due to supply demand mismatch. About 3.6% develop acute kidney injury. And the first reported death was a 61-year-old male with a long history of smoking who suffered from ARDS, heart failure, and then developed the cardiac arrest. There is drug interaction between the antiviral drugs used for treatment of the novel coronavirus and the commonly used cardiovascular medication. The ribavirin and oscillitamivir don't have significant interaction with the cardiovascular medication. However, lopinavir and ritonavir have a significant interaction with the cardiovascular medications, including statins, Novax, warfarin, clobidogrel, antiarrhythmic drugs, beta blocker, Dijoxin, Evabradine, Calcium Channel Blockers, and Phosphodiesterase 5 Inhibitors. There is an interaction as well between the hydroxychloroquine, which was used as an empirical therapy in some cases of the novel coronavirus, and antiarrhythmic drugs, beta blockers, and digitalis. What are the additional precautions for patients with underlying cardiovascular condition? We should make a plan for quickly identifying and isolating the cardiovascular patient with COVID symptom from the other patients. It is also very important for the, for the cardiac patient to remain 
current with vaccination including the pneumococcal vaccine and the annual influenza vaccination due to risk of secondary bacterial infection with the coronavirus. It is also very important to establish that uh, the telehealth protocol strategy and to avoid unnecessary follow-up visit. And it is reasonable to triage patients with COVID uh, virus according to their comorbidities as uh, cardiac disease or renal or respiratory disease as these patients are at the highest risk for morbidity and mortality. For patients with heart failure or, or volume overload, you should avoid large fluid administration for viral infection as this as this may precipitate acute heart failure and the general immunological health measures remain important for both providers and patients including eating well sleeping well and managing stress what about myocardial infarction in patients with coronavirus Healthcare providers are cautioned that classic symptoms and presentation of myocardial infarction may be masked in the context of the COVID-19, resulting in underdiagnosis. Particular emphasis should be placed on the acute PCI and the cabbage, including protocols to limit the cath lab and OR personnel to a required minimum predetermining requirement for enhanced personal protection and assessment of the post-procedural sterilization. It is also crucial to assess the risk-benefit ratio of acute MI intervention given the limited data on primary PCI benefit for type 2 MI from the acute viral illness against the nosocomial infection risk. So my final take home message, novel coronavirus is an, an emerging new universal health problem that necessitates careful medical attention. More than 80% of the infected patients experience mild symptoms and recover without intensive medical intervention. Elderly populations and the patients with comorbidities, especially cardiac patients, are at the highest risk for the morbidity and the mortality and require special care. The most effective ways for protection are frequent hand washing, cover your mouth and the nose during a cough or sneezing, and to maintain a distance of at least one meter from people who are coughing or sneezing. And this is what Sphinx said, I really don't have a nose, but I care. Thank you.